All right. This is my second attempt on making this video, so I hope this time it works out. So, in today's video, what I want to show you is um, the tools that you can use on painting VR. I'm just going to be focusing on the physical tools and not all of the different functions. So, for the purposes of this video, I'm going to assume that you know for example, how to load references and how to use them in game. But uh, I will probably also make a, a video on the other basic functions. So this is solely to showcase uh, the tools uh, that you have at your disposal. So I'm going to start from left to right to show basically what the, each tool does kind of the some of the characteristics and how it can be used pretty much so of course uh, I am kind of a beginner in this game so there might be some other ways to use these tools that I have not found out about yet so this is just to showcase the basic possibilities pretty much so we're going to start with the big roller. So when you start, by the way, uh, the colors on each of the tools is going to be randomized. So if you want to use a specific color, what you have to do yeah, is you have to dip uh, each tool into uh, a kind of paint. So like this, for example, or this. Or another thing you can do uh, with uh, B, I think, no, with B you teleport, sorry. Pressing A, you can select a color from a reference, for example, so like this, or you can also select it from the canvas. So if you already use that color, you can uh, uh, select it again, but this is going to be something I talk about uh, once I make the other video, probably. So this is the big roller and uh, uh, it's uh, pretty straightforward. So use it like you would use a big roller to paint a large surface. So it puts down a fairly uh, thick and opaque layer of paint. And it's useful if you want to cover up the wall uh, canvas with a specific color, for example, or make a very large uh, uh, zone of color. So it works like this, basically. It's pretty straightforward. So it's cool. You can see that it keeps roaming for a bit. Anyway, so one of the mechanics of this uh, game app, whatever you want to call it, is uh, the transparency of the colors. So I'm going to show this as kind of a separate tool, even if they're not a uh, um, painting tool per se, but with this, which is the thinner, you can, as it says, you can put it in one of the paint buckets and it will make uh, the color more transparent. And uh, I'm going to put this here for now. So what I did here, I already prepared uh, a fully opaque black. Then is, there is a mid opaque black and a very transparent black. So the roller is one of the tools that is affected by transparency. So for example, if you use a fully opaque color, it will just put that color down like this if you use a middle trans kind of transparency it will be like this but if you make more layers it will be more opaque as you can see uh, it's more visible in the black part of the in the white part of the canvas it kind of has a texture to it that you can see when you apply 
a more transparent layer so it's kind of like spots so this could be interesting if you want to make a specific sort of um, texture in your drawing and this is what it looks like if you use the more transparent color so it's very subtle as you can see like here on the purple but it almost looks unchanged until you apply several layers it's more visible in the white canvas so like this you can see that it put down a very thin layer so another mechanic and that uh, a lot of these tools have with exception of the spray cans think all of the others can do this so you can extend the brush let's say we want to paint it yellow and we want to go up there there is actually another way that i will show later that involves the lever but you can also what you can also do is you press like the um, uh, the trigger button the one that you would use to shoot in many games and then you uh, you can extend it with the um, joystick sort of part of the uh, of the oculus controller so as you can see you can get pretty long i don't know if there is a, li a limit let's see as you can see you could in theory paint from like the other side <laughs> of the room but uh, the longer it is you see it it gets uh, harder to control so if the roller is not so much of an issue but with some other um, tools it can be as this one is you can just do a white bit and it's not super affected but some of the other tools would be a lot more affected by this so let's bring it back and as you can see you can paint like that over there and yeah you can do something like this too if you want but yeah as far as this tool goes uh, it's pretty straightforward it's mostly to cover up a large portion of uh, the canvas with uh, a single color so let's put this away for now so we have seen this so the second one that i can show you is the big block brush brush whoop and as it says it's unstable why does it say that so well i will show you it's easier to show you so this brush as you can see you could think it's just a straightforward square big brush and you could use it as such so you could just cover up kind of a large portion of the canvas again but not as big as the with the roller and you could do something like that if you want to as you can see it puts down a very very thick layer of paint like if you look like this you can see color but uh, this is not the main particularity of this brush so why does it say is uh, warning unstable because if you start to paint more like this and you can see that it kind of splatters the color all around so you can even do it kind of on purpose for an effect and see it even went all the way there so yeah it is pretty unstable and yeah you can see it's a very very thick kind of layer so you can use this when you have to do this kind of crazy effect it could be like an explosion or something like that or for an abstract sort of art or as i said you can if you are very careful just cover up a portion with this but i would not advise it if you have to be very precise 
because it's a not the easiest to control so if you maybe press a little too much or are a little bit too hasty you can get some kind of crazy effect that you didn't mean to get but yeah I think the sound it makes is also pretty satisfying so see there we go and this one you can also extend so you could also go all the way up there and do this if you wanted to but yeah, as you can see it gets harder to control than the roller much harder so yeah <laughs> you can see that you can kind of swing it like that but yeah let's bring it back so this one like the roller is affected by uh, transparency uh, it's not a really huge difference compared to some other brushes but it does affect it you can see it in that for example here the edges are a little more uh, smudged and you see it mostly with uh, a very transparent color but yeah as far as brushes go it's not the one that is most affected by transparency unless you go very dramatic one way or the other and one cool thing about the transparency the transparency thing is that if you have um, a bucket that has a certain uh, opacity and you pick a color with the color picker so let's say you want to pick this blue it will keep that opacity so it will be this blue but maximum transparency if you want you can pick this green with middle transparency and there you go as you can see it's quite smudgy also in the sense that it picks up a bit uh, of the color uh, from where you start to paint so like this so that's that's another interesting effect and yes you could use it to make textures like this so this could be i don't know a bush something like that but yeah that's also another application of this brush so at first sight it might not seem very impractical but actually i think you can do some pretty cool stuff with it so yeah and if you go very light you can do some kind of effects like this as well so yeah this is quite a versatile brush i quite like it okay so i think that's all for this brush let's put it back and now for another rather uh, cool brush which is also unstable so what is this is the splatter brush and what does the splatter brush do well i will show you so let's just use uh, the same color that's already on it and there you go it basically makes splatters of color on the canvas and they are quite uh, drippy some of them less than others but generally they, they tend to be quite drippy so you can go very crazy like this and go very far or you can do you can get a bit uh, closer and do more of a pattern like this of splatters so it's kind of hard to get just a single splatter even from up close so this one can also extend so you can do this but yeah this is super unstable so careful when you do this <laughs> but yeah, it's kind of a fun effect it's not super practical for everything but if you need splatter of colors it's pretty cool and you can do some 
rather cool things with it. I saw someone that I think was uh, did some stalagmites with it by basically making the shape uh, with the, the streaks and then covering up the spots. Now this one is not at all affected by transparency as you can see by dipping it into different transparency uh, see even if you dip it in the Mac in the least opaque one when you splatter it it will still act as if it's the most opaque one it really doesn't change uh, which one you pick so what else can you do this with it can you paint with it as if it was a normal brush you sort of can so you can do something like this but it's as it says very unstable so you the effect you get is very unpredictable so if you go down carefully you can sort of control it but as soon as you move it you get this so quite hard to control and also if you go a little bit crazier with the coloring it really freaks out and so you get something like this which can also be interesting for kind of like a very ab abstract effect or I don't know something very unusual maybe kind of like a sci-fi sort of thing but yeah you can technically use it as a, a brush instead of just uh, to splatter color but it's like uh, a smaller and more extremely unstable version of uh, the big block brush unless you go very very carefully with it and very gently uh, you can do some sort of effects like this but yeah overall the main function of this is just to splatter color and it's quite fun so it's not a bad brush at all even if the use it has is quite limited and it does not really pick up any transparency so let's leave this for now so this is not quite a brush but uh, it's next in line so as i mentioned if you want to paint the top of the canvas you can extend the brushes but what you can also do is you can lower it down or you can bring it up if you want to paint the very bottom and it can go quite far up and quite far down like this you can just gently push it especially if you don't want to move it too much it want to be very precise you can grab it but it's harder to control in my opinion and also if you put it like this it automatically goes down i don't know if it's intentional or a bug but that's a thing and another thing about this is that whenever you place it it will stay it doesn't just drop down like most other tools so if you want to put it here you can but then it will sink down because of what i said or if you put it like upside down it will go up <laughs> and if you do this i think it's based on physics because if you do this it also moves but yeah you can just leave it where whenever or wherever in the air you could even put it like up there if you wanted but yeah let's bring it down the way it was and i'm going to put this here for now so next up is the paint brushes uh, the uh, spray cans sorry so spray cans there is a small one and a big one and they actually don't change that much in terms of the size so for example if you do this You get a fairly thin line, and you can go. Yeah, this is the 
minimum or you can do this and as you can see it's a little bigger but it's not a huge difference so that's the main difference is really not uh, uh, how big the uh, of, an, uh, of a line you can get but rather uh, from how far they work so if I go here and do this you can see it uh, does work but it's very blurred up if I go like this as you can see it's very opaque aside from the edges if I go even further like from here the small one isn't really even affecting the canvas but the big one Is still affecting it just as you can see it's a very thinned out so for this if you want to get sort of a transparency you have to go uh, with distance rather than diluting the paint because this will not react to the different opacity either so if I dunk this here or I dunk this here it's exactly the same and as you can see the size doesn't change much so some other cool effects that you can get from this so let's switch it up so whoop. Just tracking for a second sorry and anyway so one thing you can use is you use white or you pick the color from the canvas and you can sort of use it as an eraser of sorts and with this you can get a graffiti sort of effect basically or you can use it to sort of delete portions you don't want it's probably the closest thing we have uh, to an eraser even if actually if you look at uh, the blank canvas and you go over it with white you will see that it's uh, color because it's a bit wet but yeah you can do this and you can do it works a lot like an actual spray can honestly because you can also do this and you can even do this sort of effect if you want and yeah you don't have to agitate it but I sometimes like to do it just for fun and yeah and this is quite useful if you want to get uh, a large portion of the canvas covered so to make a shape that you then want to define a little more for example so uh, that I used this for example quite a lot uh, when I was making my um, ladybug drawing so what I did for that was I made the general shape which was something like this and then I made the, the shape of the head with the black Oop, I picked the right and then I pretty much started adding in all the smaller details but yeah it's also quite a um, useful tool in my opinion and as you can say, as I said, you can vary the transparency by using it from further apart. And as I said earlier, this is also not affected by, um, you cannot extend it like you do with the other tools. So you cannot just extend it all the way up. If you want to use it on the top part, uh, you have to lower uh, the canvas is the only way. 
So until in the future where I know they wanted to bring a, like um, uh, a structure where you can stand on and paint the top part. I know it was in some of the um, promotional videos, but they had to remove it for now because it was uh, too unstable. But uh, they do plan to bring it back if, uh, if possible. But yeah. So next up is the smaller roller, which is basically the same as the big roller, just smaller. It's pretty straightforward. So like this, it's very opaque. If you go with the fully opaque color, but it might take you a couple of tries if you need to cover up a dark area. And just like the other, you can do something like this. But yeah, the main use for this is basically just to uh, cover up a relatively large area uh, with pre precision. So this one is affected by transparency like the big one, so you can see the difference. This one has less less of a texture to it when you put it down than uh, the bigger version. It's a lot subtler. And then the semi-transparent one, which is very, very subtle. And you would have to go over it a couple times to see much of a difference. And this one also extends. So another thing that you can do with uh, extend the, the extending option is that you can dip it in a color that's very far away if you do not want to teleport or walk or move all the way there. So yeah, that's pretty much all for the roller. I don't know about any other special uses for it. So there we go. So now uh, for one of my favorite brushes. Sadly, I do not know of uh, it having any official sort of name, so I call it the cone, uh, cone tip uh, brush. So this one is pretty cool because uh, you can variate uh, the uh, kind of uh, mark it leaves a lot just by pressure, position, and uh, yeah, I will show you. This is the one with the smallest tip out of all the ones that we have available, I think. So it's almost pencil thin and you can do some very fine details if you're careful. So like this, say, just very gentle. like this and do a pretty thin line it's a bit hard to do but with practice you can do very fine details with it so using the very tip so that's pretty cool you could use it, for example, for sketching an outline and then go over it with all the other colors. And if you press a bit more, it gets thicker. So you can also just do this to get a thicker one. And you can also use it to get a very varied line. So you can start out very thin and then you press and you make it thicker and then you slowly move away and it gets thinner again so thicker and thinner and thicker and thinner so this is quite useful I think and you can get a lot of variation 
you can also do something like this to just get this sort of shape so if you are making I don't know flowers you can do I don't know tulips like this or you can make like prints they kind of look like uh, duck prints or you could make like a crown or a fence or cartoonish grass so you can make quite a bit quite a few effects you can also make a flower by just going in a circle oops so yeah you can also do this and you can also just paint a section be quite precise with the shape and so but the reason why I really like this one is um, so this one is one of the brushes that is probably most affected by the transparency so I will show you so like this very thick like this medium transparent so if you go light it's very light if you press hard it gets darker and the more you overlap the darker it gets and then maximum transparency very very light more visible in the light so see it's a very subtle kind of shading and this is pretty cool when you're doing very realistic drawings for example because you can get very subtle with the shading and I think it's probably the best tool to do shadows and shading or even uh, light points so I would not use it with full transparency unless you really really want to get uh, subtle but yeah and this one also can extend like this and yeah this gets I think pretty much impossible to control from so far apart honestly I will not recommend it but yeah, you could technically use it like this <laughs> can't, I can't tell if it's still expanding I think it is I think maybe this is the maximum but yeah So this, in my opinion, is very, very useful and is what I used uh, heavily for the um, ladybug in the other video. And since, as, it, as I showed you, you can take the transparency and then take a sample color. You can really exploit this to make the um, shades that you want. But very very subtle and this is uh, in my opinion the best way to do kind of shading and light effects in theory there are two shading brushes or well blurring brushes but I do not recommend much using them they are not my favorite and I will show them to you in a bit so you will see what I mean but yeah see see how cool this is this is the best brush hands down in my opinion 10 out of 10 so next is the small brush so this is for now the smallest brush available <laughs> and it's useful to make outlines especially for big drawings so 
this. You could go more precise than me, but you can make outlines to your drawings. You can draw, so you can say, I mean, you could write. So if you're making a comic style thing, that's pretty cool. And you can just use it as a small brush to make small lines and small effects. If you go very fast, you can get this sort of dot-like effect, I guess. Or you can straight up paint dots. But uh, even with the max opacity, they are not very opaque. So you would have to do like this. So yeah. Pretty straightforward. forward. You can uh, do a wall area like this, but it's not the most practical brush to do this unless it's a very small area. So, yeah. And when you use it, it does carry on a little bit of the color from where you last touched, as you can see. So be mindful of that. It works as if it was wet paint in real life, pretty much. So, yeah. This one also extends. But, yeah, it's not very practical to use it from afar since it's not... It's no stable and, yeah. This happens pretty much. Oh, yeah, you can also use it like this and do this, basically. But... Not really the brush I would recommend for this sort of effect. And it is affected by transparency. So you can use differently uh, opaque colors with this one. So not much to say about it, said from that. Now. This is one of the, uh, what I would call the blurring brushes. And I am not the biggest fan of them. So I will show you why. So for starters, a big, um, um, a bug that they currently have is that they don't pick up transparency at all. So no matter which one you use, it will always act as if it is full opacity. So. can see it here for example. so what is interesting though about this is that they, we will carry out uh, we carry the um, color from where you place them and you can do a gradient with the color you picked like so but if you want to do subtle shading it's not really the best tool in my opinion but if you want to do great gradients is not bad you could technically just paint with it but it doesn't make much sense unless you want to get something very smudgy as an effect yeah it will drag color back in so be mindful of that or you will be stuck in an infinite loop, pretty much. Yeah. Doesn't do much in terms of effect. As you can see, so. Yeah. Well, oh, this is pretty cool. It kind of expands like a real brush would. <laughs> That's nice. But yeah. Not much to say about this. Not my favorite type of brush, if I have to be honest, as I said. So, let's put it down. And we have the... Ah, and this one also extends. So, whoops. There you go. Now we have the two round brushes. And... This one, as far as I could tell, 
there is really not a difference to them in terms of the effect that they have. Mm. They are virtually the same brush, pretty much. So let's pick purple to change a bit. And these are affected by transparency, by the way. So let's pick a more transparent purple. And it's starting to get pretty crowded. <laughs> but anyway, so they are pretty straightforward uh, round brushes. And uh, there is not really much of a difference between the two as far as I can tell in effect or anything. They're both equally opaque when you pick uh, the same color. So let's pick blue with both of them. And as you can see, doesn't change a bit. Like, so, see, it's the exact same brush, except there's two of them. Now, why is there two of the same brush? I have some theories. One is that you can double wield and do something like this, for example. And uh, another theory is that you can have two colors that you're using, and maybe you do want to switch it up between them. By the way, you can extend them. It works with both. Anyway, let's say you have two colors that you are using and you don't want to keep changing up between the two. So you don't want to be doing this and then this and then this and then whoops you mess up and you use the wrong color for example instead you can do you can have two colors and then you can do one detail with one and one with the other or just if you want to use the same hand you set them down for a moment do this, pick it up, do this. So fairly straightforward. You can uh, uh, cover a whole surface with it. Maybe not a huge surface, I would not advise, as it will take a while. But yeah, you can use it like this. You can also do outlines if you have to do very thick outlines. So let's say you wanted to outline the heart we made before, you could. And yeah, pretty straightforward around brushes really. If you have ever used, whoops, if you have ever used them in real life, very similar principle. So then you have the flat brushes. This is the blurring brush and it works the exact same as the um, round one, except uh, it's flat. So it's basically the same brush, but flat. It's much, much, not much to say about it. It will carry the color you place it on for a while. And yeah, not much to say. It is also not affected by transparency for now. And uh, maybe it's a bit more interesting to me than the other, as you can spread out a larger portion with it. But yeah, once again, not my favorite type of brush to use in this game or app or whatever. And then you have the flat. Ah, this one also extends for the record. So, and then you have the flat brushes, which both extend, so we can get that out of the way. And uh, yeah, these ones are like the round brushes, but they're flat, so they react to different transparencies. And uh, they work much like um, a big brush in real life would, honestly. So, like this, and like this, and 
like this. And as same with the same as for the others, they are the same one or the other. It doesn't change. So you can double yield with this too. Or you can use one at a time and keep a color on each. You can do a line like this. Yeah, so pretty straightforward. So as far as the um, drawing tools per se are, I almost showed you everything. Why almost? I did not show you the, the most basic tool, which is your hands. Yes, you can smudge colors with your hands like this. Or just the flat part of the hand. It's very, very smudgy, I have to say. It really carries the pigment uh, a lot, which is a bit unrealistic in my opinion. I think it f if faded out sooner, it would look better because as you can see, you really can spread it far out. So you could even use it to fill out an area if you really wanted, <laughs> as you can see. And yeah, you can do this sort of thing. So you have to be careful of this because yes, you can, uh, whoop, yes, you can accidentally smudge the color where you're painting. So if you're doing this, maybe you get too close and you accidentally do this and you're like, whoop. So it heard the noise. Anyway, you can accidentally uh, smudge your color while you're painting. It doesn't happen that a lot to me, but I know other people have had some frustration with this, so be careful. So yeah, that's all for the painting tools per se. So other tools that are in the game, physical tools. So we are already seen the lever and we have the buckets themselves. Sadly for now, you cannot just finger paint by dipping your hand in the bucket and you cannot splash the color on the canvas, as you can see. Well, you. Oh, you can if you get like really, really close. You can do this. But yeah, you have to be very, very close and it's not that precise. But you can technically pour some of the paint from the um, on the canvas, apparently. Ah, I, I had not noticed this. But yeah. Back to the, the cans. So what you can do with the cams themselves is that you can thin the color, as I said, with the thinner, which is this, or you can mix the colors together. So let's say you want to get um, a more blue kind of green. You can do this until it's the shade that you want. And let's say you want it to be lighter, but uh, not uh, more transparent. Well, you can add some white. And you want it to have a bit, a very light bit of gray to it. Then you do this. And then you want it to be a little bit transparent. So you do this. And there you have it, your, your color, you can apply it, and there you go, completely different color from what you had before. And you can mix them 
like you would the real color more or less so of course you get orange with uh, yellow and red you will get purple from red and blue and you will get the green from blue and yellow so it is not that easy to get the green even in real life it's not very easy to get green from yellow and blue if you mix colors it's one of the harder colors to achieve so that's probably why they already have a green available rather than have you mix your own but yeah you can get green if you're patient so like this so it's a similar green actually to what we got here which is almost more of an aquamarine color if you think about it but yeah it is a sort of green or if you do not want to mix your colors you can pick them and there you have a green and uh, yeah that's pretty much it I think I showed you everything as far as the tools go or at least the tools for painting and yeah this is the end result of my little experiment I'm going to save a screenshot just for the fun of it even if it's not really much of a finished concept so yeah and that's most of what you can do for the tools for now there are other areas in here uh, that you can explore but for now there isn't much in them so what i want to do here just for fun is i want to test how far i can go and still be able to paint by extending this so can i technically paint I'm being at the other side no so this is okay like this there so this is the furthest that you can get with the telescopic tool pretty much so yeah that's all and I will see you in another video probably to show you the basics of uh, how to use this game such as uh, loading files to use a as reference or using uh, the reference that are already there there are two mostly for the colors and some of the other functions but um, I still need to explore some of them and uh, part of that video would need me to record things from my computer rather than the VR and they have to see which tools to use uh, and, and all that so that might uh, take a while so I'm going to sign with my signature and There we go.